Hi everyone, this is Sean Frangella for PremiumBeat.com and today we're going to go over how to create a cascading text animation in Cinema 4D by combining all sorts of different effectors. So here's an example render of this sort of idea and if I take a look at my Cinema 4D file that I have open we got some Mo text and there's a bunch of different effectors lined up and then a basic camera move. And this is the idea behind this to go through some basic stuff you can do with effectors like plain and random, which is kind of the starting point when you get into effectors. And we can do with more advanced ones like shader. And if we look at this other option over here in this separate render, we have a step effector going on too as an option. So we'll go through how you can line these up using Motex for letters and words and kind of basically the stepping off point of how you can do some really cool text animations using Motex and a bunch of effectors and really randomize it and get some interesting stuff by lining them up differently and kind of playing around that way. So I'm in Cinema 4D. I'll just get started with a new file. So I'll go to File, New. And to get started, I'm just going to create some Motex. So I'll go to MoGraph, Motex, and I'll swing my camera over to look at the text and on the Motex, I'll just go to object and type animation in capitals and pull back here. And real quick, as we're starting, I'll point out that my render settings are at the physical render and 1280 by 720. So HD and I have on ambient occlusion and that's really it. So there's just a little bit of a 3d scene set up. So anyway, I got my text. It's 3d to change the font. I'll just go down to font and let's do something like this shy town font that I have because why not use that one right there and it's cool font looks cool in 3d but you could use anything and then i'm just going to add some fillet caps under cap so fillet cap fillet cap do engraved and on the object just take out the vertical spacing a bit really just to get it if i do a quick render so that we have three-dimensional text that looks good when it's all capitals and will look cool when it's flying in from behind the camera and so i can control a little bit what i'm doing and maybe have a camera move i'll put in a new camera and turn that on and under camera I'll just zero out all these rotations so I can line it up straight on so we figure our camera is looking at this text and maybe punching in or dollying back and all these letters are just flying all over the place and ending up here but they're not doing anything yet so let's do some animation so what we want to start talking about is how to add some interesting character by character letter by letter and word by word animation using all sorts of effectors. And the way you can get those is go to MoGraph, Effector. And you can see there's lots of them, like plain, random, step, even sound. And you can really line them up and do some fun stuff. So how these work is if I have MoTeX selected, so that's important that it is selected. If I go to MoGraph, Effector, Plane as an example, it's going to apply this to the MoTeX. You can see it kind of popped up. And if I go back to MoTeX, it's dropped it under letters, which is important because I could do lines or words and we'll go over how to do that later. But what it's done, and this is kind of a basic one, is it just moved it up 100 pixels by default. So we can see on this effector, Y goes up 100 pixels. And so if I turn the strength down to zero, it's going back to its original point and we can do position, scale, rotation. So the idea behind all these effectors is you could check things on. So if we wanted to have it go from behind the camera, We'll just pull down in Z and then we could just command click to make a keyframe at the beginning, go to 90, punch in zero and new keyframe. And then the text is going to animate in, but that's boring because it's just animating as it would if it's a solid object. But what's useful with these is all you have to animate is the strength and say, if I animated the scale and uniform scale, and if I look at a frame that's in the middle and say rotation, now we can start to do some more interesting things. So now it's still animating on those strength keyframes. So if I go back to the beginning, they're rotating and scaling into place. So I'll just play this. And there they go. But this still isn't very interesting. We're just getting started. So what's useful about these is if I go to Motex and letters is that we can add different ones up sequentially, change the order and do all sorts of stuff. So on the same Motex, if I go to MoGraph, Effector, Random, that will kind of randomize again just their position because if i'm on the random effector randomly moving their position 50 50 50 and xyz if i check that off or and check down scale same thing it's 
similar to this plane effector, but it's changing it randomly. So if I randomly have them in the, say, random rotation, they're not rotating evenly. So you can do some cool stuff to get some randomness. And again, if I go to Mo Text, it's important to understand that this is an object and these effectors are existing in our scene and being applied to it when I have them selected and drop them on. So if I just deleted this and if I didn't have Motex selected, you can see that these still exist in the scene. I just deleted them from Motex. And if I wanted to add them back on or if I accidentally didn't have it selected, I can just go to Motex letters, drag on random, drag on plane, and that's going to apply them. And again, we can do lines or words instead of letter by letter and word by word. So again, if we go to the beginning, I'll go to random and I can command click to turn this on at 100, go to the end, turn strength down to zero, new keyframe. And now if I play, they're animating in from behind the camera and kind of randomly moving on position scale rotation and ending at zero. And if I want to see these at the same time, I can, of course, look at my mini timeline or go up to window timeline. And there I can see there's both of them. So if I just wanted to move all of them to say like 45 so it doesn't take as long, I can do that. And go back to the beginning and play, and you can see it happens over 45 frames. Now, that was kind of a quick overview of these two, and I went through that a little fast because I wanted to get to some more of them because these are kind of the basics, but when this stuff gets really interesting is when you get into these other ones like shader or step, delay, and all sorts of other ones. So again, on this Mo text, these are kind of the basics. They're kind of randomly moving in. And now let's do some more interesting stuff with this shader effector. So on this Mo text, I'm going to go to Mo graph effector shader. And again, it's going to look pretty similar to what happened before. And if I want to work on just this shader effector, I can turn off random and plain and go back in time to say the middle of this animation. And it still looks like they're just going bigger and smaller, but why this shader effector is a little more interesting and you can control it a little better is rather than just on off position scale rotation, if we go to shading, we can click this little arrow and add any sort of texturing ideas and add any sort of texturing elements, colors, gradients to control how much this is happening as opposed to just zero to a hundred. So what does that mean as an example, if I go to gradient, I have this black and white gradient down here, and that is how much this is being affected. So you can see the shader is this black to white. The parameter right now is just scale. So if I turn that scale up, you can see that where it's black, that's not being affected at all. And where it's white, it's being affected 100%. So you could do some really cool stuff with this because I can turn on the strength. Now I can have them kind of go back and forth on this shader, but you can also animate all the shading properties. So if I go to shading and I'll just go back first and turn the strength up to a hundred and again, shading, I can click gradient and now I could move this gradient around. I could have it go back and forth. So if it goes from black to white, to black, to white, to black, to white, or gray, which would be a partially, there, you can see we only have this one parameter. We don't have to animate a bunch of stuff, but we're creating this whole different in and out animation. And if we look at this from the top, we can see a lot more clearly what's happening. So if we think about this as on the shader under parameter, we're doing a scale. Maybe we turn on position Z. And now as I push them back, the ones that are moving back is what is the change between black and white in this gradient. And if we add some turbulence, it's going to vary it up even more because it's adding this idea that there's noise within this texture. So now if I wanted to animate this same one, again, I'll go to parameter and maybe just pull them back behind the camera and maybe turn on rotation too. So we get some rotation as they're coming in. Now, if I animate that strength, I'll animate it from like, 350 because I can see that those are off screen and at the beginning I'll command click and then go to 45 because that's where my point of stopping is go to zero command click now if I play this you can see from the top that there's a bunch of stuff going on all at once and there's only two keyframes so if I look at my 
timeline over here, I don't have a bunch of rotation, scale, position, keyframes. I have just this one animation on a shader effector or on random or plane that's animating from zero to a hundred. And it's giving me all of this animation all at once. And again, if I go to Mo text, I have all of these in and I can turn them on and off and kind of see how they build in. So I had my shader effector. And if I turn that off, I had my random effector. So they're kind of flying all over the place. And I had my plane effector, which was just kind of a basic rotation. And now if I turn them all on, because they're all applying to this, a lot of things are going to happen. And look at this, it's flying all over the place and then finally snaps in. And this is happening because all of these are impacting this text in this order. So it's randomly affecting them, plane affecting them, and then shader. So if I go to a frame kind of in the middle, it's important to note that the order happens sequentially. So if I change random and plane or random and shader, you can see that there's different animations. So it's happening differently. And if I want to make this a little more interesting, what I could do is on my timeline, stagger these a bit. So I'll have the shader go to 30 and have it every 10 frames as they end. So now we can see that they kind of fly in and they turn off sequentially over 10 frames. So a lot's going on and then slowly kind of slows down. And this can be a really nice way to animate text because you can turn stuff on and off and kind of audition different ideas and really keep control of your keyframes without having a million keyframes. It's really just one, two, three sets of keyframes. And there you have your whole animation and we could keep going. If we turn off all of these, so just back to our text and I'll go to MoGraph effector step. It's going to do that sort of animation, but in a different way. So rather than a texture, it's going to look at this little Bezier curve. So if I go to parameter and put it on position, turn it way up. And now you can see nothing's happening because I actually forgot to apply it to my Motex. So I can fix that. I'll just go to Motex, drag it on. And it is good to know that you can fix that. It doesn't have to be when you have it selected, but if you have it selected, it'll skip a step. And now if I go to my step effector, and turn my strength way up. You can see if we look at this from the top view that it's affecting this text because I changed the parameter position Z and it's not affecting it randomly or by textures like the other one, but it's affecting it by this Bezier curve. So if I move this, you can see that's how much it's affecting this whole line of text. So if I kind of zoom out a little bit here, we can see that we can kind of pull them in. And again, you can just animate the strength in and out. So if I wanted, the text to start here, we just at the beginning, command click, go to 45, put it at zero. And then if I go back to my perspective view and go to the beginning, then I have the text coming in as that Bezier curve animates on and off. So it's kind of cascading them in. And then I can just kind of turn back on different ones to get different effects and kind of see what happens. So there's step in random and maybe let's try to turn on the shade or two. And that's kind of, crazy, but it's good to see what happens. And then the plain one, and this can be a really fun way to do text animations because you can kind of try lots of different things, turn stuff on and off and really just try lots of different ideas without really being destructive to your text. And as I mentioned, why this Mo text option is useful as opposed to extruding text is we have all lines, words, and letters. So if rather than just one big word animating in. If I hold command to duplicate this Mo text and I'll just turn the first one off. And then the second one, I'll go to object. And rather than one word, I'll say, this is a longer text animation and kind of reposition my camera a bit. So it all fits on the screen. And while I'm looking at this, I'll just pull in the kerning a bit on horizontal spacing align its middle, fix my camera. And this is important as much as the animation, but I, you know, care about type. So I want it to look nice. And while I'm doing this, I could go to filter grid and just turn that off. But anyway, so this whole thing is a copy of this first one. So it's still going to do all the letters at once and make this paragraph. But if I didn't want it to do letters, I could actually just 
grab all of these and delete them from letter and go to words and then just drag them in one by one to this box. And again, it's important the order that they're in. And now if I turn all of them on, all that crazy animation isn't gonna happen, but it's only gonna to apply to words. So I could do the same thing. I could turn off each one to kind of get things a little more controlled. And there we go. It kind of all builds together, but it does it by words instead. And if we're thinking of this as being a little more dramatic movie title, what we could do is animate the camera move a little. So I'll go to camera and rather than it just flying in and then stopping on the still frame, maybe like 55 or 45 where some of them are starting to turn off. I'll go to my camera and I'll command click just this one parameter under coordinate for Z and then just have this pulling back a little. And I could see what's happening if I look at my top view. It's going to pull the camera out a little and then turn that on. So then all this text and words are flying in and the camera's still moving. And if we want to fix a little bounce thing, we can grab all of our keyframes and change interpolation to linear. And this is more than I plan to cover, but you kind of get the idea. And I didn't plan to get too much in a camera animation, but you kind of get the idea. The more little details you add, the better it's going to look. But using all of these effectors and kind of turning them on and off and randomizing them can really give you a lot of control with text animations and do a lot more than just trying to by hand animate letters or words, which can really be a pain in the butt. So use these techniques, make some cool title animations, and don't forget to try out all these other ones because you can really do a lot of cool stuff. So this has been Sean Frangella for PremiumBeat.com teaching you how to create some cool cascading text animations using all sorts of effectors on MoText. Be sure to stop by PremiumBeat.com for all of your music and sound effects needs and check out the blog on PremiumBeat.com for tips and tricks on Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other apps. And if you want to check out some more of what I do, you can check out SeanFrangella.com and YouTube.com slash SeanFrangella, as well as get in touch on Twitter at Twitter.com slash SeanFrangella and Facebook.com slash Vitel. And thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to all Premium Beat channels on YouTube and Vimeo to get more animation tutorials, and I will see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.